What's up guys, Sharpen here, and today's video was brought to you by my Discord server for both suggesting and voting for the tutorial for you to have today. If you're interested in any of these topics, I recommend you join the Discord server yourself and you'll get the chance to vote on them and have me feature them on the channel. But I know why you're here, today I've got for you a light race tutorial. Now if you want to see more of these tutorials, I recommend you subscribe to my channel and drop a like on this video for more. And with that on the side, let's get on the tutorial! First things first, I want to make a new project, call it Light Race. I want to start with an old method, one second. Back in the day, I used a simple method with gradients. Let's try to recreate that. Now I just opened a program which is called Paint.net. This is a very great program for simple textures with transparency and layers. Now I know sometimes it might seem like I'm promoting Paint.net, but I really just think it's an awesome program for simple needs such as textures for my animator. Let's skip all this and get to the actual thing, yeah? Image, resize, and I want to make it 200 pixels in width and around 600 in height. I don't know why I typed it, it was already 600. Okay, now I want to make a gradient that goes from the color to pure transparency. I can change the color by applying any color to it. Let's go with orange for now. Now select your gradient tool. If you want to have a color to transparency mode, click on this arrow and select transparency mode. Now anything you draw will fade the color down to transparency. Now this was just an example. I want a white gradient. I just want to let you know how this works. Now I want to save this file, call it gradient, and save it as a PNG because PNG is a file format that supports image transparency, that's what we need. Coming back to my animator, I want to import a new surface, call it gradient, apply the texture we just made, see gradient right here. This image will now serve as my light. First I need to know where my light is. Let's turn this camera off for now, let's turn on high quality rendering and as you see the shadows are on this side and I kind of want the sunlight to be falling from the other side into the window, so let's just do that real quick. Okay, we've got it. Now the sun is falling through the windows. So, poor microphone. Select the gradient, go under graphics and tick off cast shadows. Position the gradient on the edge. Put the custom rotation point to plus eight for easier scaling. Turn it slightly. Resize it. So it covers one face of the window. Also scale it up and now make it hit the ground on the exact same point as the light. So it will look something like this, brightness 100% and now I'll just drop the alpha bit down and this was my light ray before. But thanks to the new Minimator mechanics we can do something even better. Now the brightness doesn't matter at all because you can simply tick this option which says glow. This is now glowing. Tick the second option only render glow. Now it's not gonna render the original gradient, but it is going to render the glow. Now of course this is obviously too strong because of my current settings. You might not have it that way, so just click this gear icon to open up the settings, open up the render, and now go down the glow options. You can mess with the glow radius and with the glow intensity of how strong it's gonna be. Something like this looks optimal, right? Well, no, I don't encourage you to do this. Actually, keep the intensity very strong because doing this, you have more control. Now, if I select the gradient again and go to the glow color, you can easily drop the color down to get the same effect. So if I were to add like another cube or something, let me just find it, the cube can still glow with the intense brightness. If my intensity was down here, there was no way for me to make this cube even brighter. So my tip for you, keep the intensity very strong. If you want a smaller effect, just decrease the color. That way you have more control over everything you do. This was one way. If you wanted to make all four edges, you would basically just duplicate this several times, put it on the edges, and that was it. But what if I say that this is way too tiring? I want a simpler method. Luckily for you, there is one. Add a new cube, and this cube will now serve as my gradient. But we need to make a custom texture for that. So, let's click the map texture, and that will display an option, export map. Click it. Just export it to your desktop or something, call it map so you know what it is. Now I want to open this map with paint.net as well. This map tells you what the cube is gonna look like. I don't wanna draw over the existing map because that would ruin it, so I'm gonna make a new layer. Now I want to paint the entire layer white, then I'm gonna add the transparency gradient to the first half. If I make the bottom layer invisible now, the upper three textures will have the transparent gradient. Now I gotta do the same for the back and make the top fully bright and the bottom invisible. So that's what we're gonna do. Select the pixels on the back, do the same thing. So basically paint it white, add the transparent gradient. Now if I make the bottom invisible, you see I made another transparent gradient. Select the top, paint it white, and you're pretty much done because the background was transparent to begin with. This is now my texture. Click file, save as, cube underscore gradient. Again, save it as a PNG file because PNG supports transparency. Flatten the image, 
that's it. Now we come back to this cube. Brass for the texture we just made, that will make a nice gradient cube, which we had wanted. Custom rotation point is gonna be eight, so we can position it nicer. Now we're gonna do the same thing as before, but with a cube and not with a surface. Take off cast shadows, position it in the center, resize it. Maybe scale these two down so we can match the bottom better. And I would say that's it. More adjustments are welcome, but I don't have much time in this tutorial. Make it glow, make it only render glow. And now we've come to some sort of weird thing. Ah, the glow color is put on black. Let's, let's increase that. Oh yeah, that looks pretty nice. Looks like a volumetric lighting. Imagine doing this on all your windows. Like that would look a lot nicer. Okay, I did the first five because I had to, plus I only did the topper ones, not the lower ones, but hey, this looks nice. We can all agree on that. If you want to change the color, however, you can do that. Glow color, you can go for red, you can go for basically any color you want. Like, I can smell a lot of party effects on this one, but let's just get a small yellow tint. Open the glow color, select yellow, and then simply move a bit to the right. Don't change the lightness value, just go slightly on the right. And this, I'm satisfied, I'm satisfied. Now this volumetric lighting or light rays usually occur in foggy atmospheres or dusty rooms or anything that's in the air to diffuse the light, make it visible in midair. So let's try to add fog. I'm not sure how that's gonna look like, but let's try to add fog and we'll see if that applies. Not too bad. Let's try to go for custom fog color. Not gonna lie, this looks like a pretty dusty old factory. I mean, if the sky wasn't so blue all of a sudden, but let's ignore the sky. And look at this. This doesn't look too bad. Put some particles in the air, make them glow as well. Like, I can see some atmosphere there. Now let's try to use that in practice. Okay, so I've reset all of my settings, I believe. Delete these two, remove the resources. I want to import a schematic. Import from world, and the world is called scenery. Delete afterwards. I literally made this world just because of the scenery. Okay, that's it. Apparently I had cut the rivers. Huh. Give me a second. Got it working now. So I like this shot, so I'm just gonna make a camera right here so I don't... That's not a camera. Make a camera right here so I don't lose it. And now we want to do something. Add a custom sky image. Tweak the ambient colors to be more orange-ish. Dark, but orange. Try to make the sunlight color match the background as much as it possibly can. I'd say something like this. Now we add the gradient surface. There's no need for a cube because this is a glowing horizon. Okay, I wanna zoom in with my camera because I want to see which peak is this. It's this one. Thank you very much, camera. You can help yourself by temporarily making the gradient black so you know what you're doing. Stretch the gradient across all the faces of the blocks. Put it back to white. Adjust the glow color. Tick off only render glow for you to see what you're doing in the real time. Duplicate it. Position it on the edges. Let's test this with three of them now. And this already looks pretty damn nice. Of course, I forgot to turn off cast shadows. Rotate the beams slightly. Select all of them, click on only render glow. Adjust your render settings. And if needed, adjust the color. Open up your camera. Add some bloom and raise it up. Increase the intensity so you know what you're doing. Increase the radius and now decrease the intensity by a lot. Don't use too much bloom, it's ugly. Tweak your effect by changing the blend color. Bloom, no bloom, bloom, no bloom. See my point? Add a vignette effect. Excuse my pronunciation. Maybe tilt the camera. Add some color correction to increase the contrast. Make slight changes because these settings are very sensitive. Add some depth of field and make the foreground blurred. Increase the fade size to make it more smooth and natural. You can increase the blur size to 10 to help yourself out to see what you're doing. Help yourself out with the rule of thirds. This is totally gonna be my thumbnail, I swear. Let's increase the vignette effect. Voila, you have a stunning wallpaper. Now there is a lot to still be tweaked in this, maybe help yourself out with Photoshop, but this doesn't look too bad. A few areas could use some slight adjustments, but you get the main principle. This was the light rays tutorial. I mean, take a look at this one. This looks like a pretty nice light ray, like 
you could export this part alone and it would look nice. My point is, light rays look amazing and now there's a nice and realistic way for you to make them. That's all I have for you today, now it's up to you to make something good. Subscribe for more tutorials and suggest them in the comments or on my Discord server. My name is Sharpwind, thank you for watching and stay sharp.